I've described how I wrote my most recent book, Perspective and Guidance for a Time of Deep Discord, because of great concern I feel about how, with issues of most every sort, people today are dividing almost immediately into polar camps. Extreme polarization is setting neighbor against neighbor, creating a distraction that gets in the way of addressing essential questions, and often very directly putting us at risk. After addressing causes with each chapter in the book, I illustrate how we might bring cultural and mature perspective to one issue where divisiveness too often prevails. I include the science versus faith polarity in the book's reflections in part because for many people it is this polarity that feels most basic. I also include it because of how it can seem impervious to larger ways of understanding. If it is indeed possible to engage the science faith polarity in a way that is more encompassing, that is no small thing. In addition, I include science and spirituality for a couple of reasons more specific to creative systems theory, the body of work that gives us the concept of cultural maturity. The way in which the science faith polarity gets close to polarity at its most fundamental helps us more deeply grasp why we think of the language of polarity in the first place, and the way a creative frame invites us to entertain larger ways of thinking about both science and religion provides important support support for creative systems theory's particular approach. I've noted that a basic observation provides the architecture of the book. In times past, when we encountered polarized positions in partisan advocacy, our task was obvious and unquestioned. We assumed that there were only two options and that our job was to figure out which one was right and fight for it. As we look to the future, polarization has very different implications. We recognize that what we are seeing is left and right hands of a larger systemic picture, and the fact of polarization alerts us to the fact that neither side has yet to ask the larger hard question that ultimately needs to be addressed. We appropriately start with the hard larger question. A person might assume it to be, is God real, given that it is a question that conventionally divided thinking into two mutually exclusive, irreconcilable realities. But I, was, I will come back to shortly. In fact, I don't think it is a terribly helpful question. This is not because I know the question's answer, but rather because it is limited in where it can take us unless we are willing to settle for endless circular debates. The better question concerns the nature of truth. Over the course of history, the contrasting perspectives of science and faith have provided the bottom line answers when it comes to truth. Sometimes the forms these answers have taken have spoken in concert, and other times they have manifested in warring opposites. But in the end, their juxtaposed vantages are what we have come back to. Our larger question then becomes just what is that, that ultimately makes something true. For most people, the whole idea that it might be possible to get beyond the science versus faith debate and engage the truth question in larger ways makes little sense, or the possibility, if it is entertained, the assumption is that the answer will be so philosophical and obscure that would, it would have little practical value. But there is another legitimate explanation for why we might have a hard time imagining other possibilities. It has to do with how we have been capable of thinking in times past and with how understanding has worked and been structured. We get a hint at how something more might be possible with my introduction to parts work in episode 6. I described how, the science and how science and spirituality are each ultimately best thought of as parts. I observed how a person who identifies with the scientific will likely assume in getting started that the part that embodies scientific sensibility appropriately sits in the whole person, whole system, culturally mature chair and that a person who identifies more with faith will assume something similar for a, the part that embodies spiritual sensibilities. 
and I described how people doing parts work discover over time that if either a more scientific or a more spiritual part sits in the whole person chair, ultimately unhelpful personal life choices result. And I went further to claim that any understanding of the scientific or the spiritual able to serve in times ahead requires a more fully systemic, culturally mature kind of perspective. Creative systems theory lets us go further and address how the material and the spiritual might relate more conceptually. It is not essential that a person agree with this particular interpretation for our purposes here. It is enough that the theory further supports the fact that more encompassing perspective might be possible. For those who have interest, there are important added reasons to take time with how the theory approaches the science versus faith question. It brings clarity to one of the most essential recognitions if we are to understand polarity or polarization deeply. It turns out that polarity at its most fundamental, rather than contrasting two kinds of opposing difference, juxtaposed unity and oneness on one hand, with difference and multiplicity on the other. We can apply this conclusion directly to the science versus religion polarity. Science in its various forms over time can be thought of as having its origins in how the world looks from the difference, multiplicity side of fundamental polarity when, experiencing at a collect when experienced at a collective scale. Spirituality, religion in its various forms over time in a complementary way has its origins in how the world looks from the unity, oneness side of fundamental polarity when experienced at a collective scale. A closer look at the contrasting contributions of science and religion supports this interpretation. Science is about distinction, this as opposed to that. Biology delineates the creature into tax, the creaturely into taxonomies of genus and species. Chemistry gives us the periodic table and the interplay of atoms and mo molecules. And classical physics describes objects of different mass and the action and reaction laws of material cause and effect. Spiritual Spiritual religious experience, in contrast, highlights oneness. We can think of religious belief through history in terms of four connectedness-related themes. How existence arose from the undivided in the beginning, community, congregation, and communion, right thought and behavior, shared moral assumptions, and how experiences interrelate, and in the end, how it is all interrelated. In Latin, the root of the word religion means to connect. William James put it this way. In mystic states, we both become one with the absolute and we become aware of our oneness. We can also use a creative frame to map the changing relationship of science and religion over time. In early societies, material and spiritual sensibilities tended to be spoken of almost as one. Later, with much of the European Middle Ages, material and spiritual inclinations were more, off, more often took expression in ways that were explicit, explicitly at odds. Later still, as with Cartesian dualism, science and religion more comfortably coexist, but they accomplished the, this feat by, in effect, ignoring each other's existence. The sequence of juxtapositions is just what we would expect to find if the relationship between science and religion is ultimately creative. I promise to return to the perhaps surprising assertion that the is God real question is really not that useful. A person might assume that my reason for this conclusion is the one commonly put for, forward by self-described atheists, namely that efforts to rationally prove the existence of God through history have never quite succeeded. 
But while I would generally agree with this observation, my reason for setting the question aside could just as well be thought of as coming down on the opposite side of the argument. It has to do with the poverty of atheism as a concept. While the religion versus atheism debate certainly sells books, I find atheism's Atheism as a belief, a bit silly. The vehemence we commonly find with its adherents suggests that it is best thought of as better than another form of fundamentalism. More specifically, in leaving out the evolutionary dimension of understanding, the argument for atheism doesn't really hold up. If I argue that the ancient Greeks were wrong for believing that there were gods atop Olympus, or that tribal societies have been wrong for having animistic deities, you would appropriately conclude that I'd missed the point. While these are kinds of beliefs that tend not to work today, in their time they gave expression to an important kind of need, and, more deeply I would argue, reflected an essential aspect of human sensibility. I agree, as the advocate for atheism may be quick to point out, that the more modern idea of a monotheistic god with a capital G has resulted in harm as well as benefit. But as I see things, the larger portion of that harm, while it may have been done in the name of religion, has come not from religion per se, but from our systemic need for worlds of us, worlds of us versus them. And while it is true, too, that religion makes little sense rationally and can lead to some claims that really don't hold up, that is not what is important. Religion through time has given expression to essential aspects of being human, aspects that are just as important in our time and arguably now more important than ever. Religion, as we have known it in modern age times, is best thought of not in terms of the rightness or wrongness of its assertions, but as one chapter in an evolving picture of truth. The important question becomes what a next chapter might look like. In challenging atheism, criti atheism critiques of religion in this way, it is important to note that creative systems theory just as directly challenges science. And once the, again, the challenge is not what we might imagine. At least it is different from that commonly put forward by the right, that science is just another kind of belief or option. Science represents a very specific kind of belief with radical and powerful implications. Its foundation, repeatable objective observation, proof by experimentation, at least for certain kinds of understanding, takes us beyond simple opinion and gives us a solid foundation from which to make choices. The observation commonly made today that it is fine to have your own opinions, but, but that you don't get to choose your own facts, holds up well when it comes to questions where science applies and represents one of modern science's profound contributions. The challenge to modern science is the simple recognition that all not, all, not all concerns are fully amenable to its method. And that includes a great many of our time's most important concerns, the nature of human purpose, the deep workings of intelligence, the importance of creativity, and just what makes relationships relationship, to name but a few from numerous examples. From integrative meta-perspectives, more systemic vantage, science and religion, material and spiritual become crayons in the systemic box. Using the parts work analogy, the yes to, ni to science is an affirming of the precious, if, is the uh, an affirming of the precision and detail it brings to certain kinds of understanding. The no comes response to the recognition of while it can provide clear answers for particular kinds of questions, with others it can blind us to what is ultimately important. The yes to religion is that appreciation connectedness, appreciating connectedness is often critically important and has particularly important, particular importance in our time. The no comes with the recognition that connectedness is at best half of what makes something true and that failing to appreciate this fact leaves us just as blind to what is ultimately needed. Again, we find our now familiar apparent paradox, though it may take more of a stretch to get there than most people are ready for. 
Bringing more systemic perspective to the science-religion debate requires that we think with greater complexity and nuance than advocates of either polar position may appreciate. But in the end, where doing so takes us is also simpler and ultimately common sense. We may have historically needed to think in terms of polarity, but there is no reason ultimately to, to assume that reality is anything but whole. Again, I appreciate your thoughts and questions.